What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Sovereignty YouTube channel. As always, I'm Alexis. This is Danny, and this is another episode of our Sovereignty playthrough series. We are joined this week by another guest because if you're new here, we have a new guest every week joining us to play a new game on Sovereignty. So this week's guest is Jillian. Jillian, please introduce yourself and tell our audience a little bit about who you are. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jillian. Um, I am the marketing designer for Brotherwise Games. Um, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. I do some graphic design and I run all the marketing there so anything you see on social media for brotherwise that is me um i also am just you know a regular in the board gaming industry um i do my own uh twitch streaming from time to time as well as uh just put content out there you might know me from that but if not then hello so today jillian we are here playing castles by the sea we are super excited that you joined us we'll give danny a chance now to introduce this game and tell us how this game works danny what is castles by the sea all about well castles by the sea is from brother wise games the company jillian worked for so we are super excited to have you here today jillian to play with us so we're gonna click the ready button at the bottom of our screen and then it's gonna load into the game castles by the sea is a magical sand castle building game so we're gonna be placing blocks onto the beach in front of us and we're going to be creating sand castles however just like when you create sand castles in real life there are going to be some hazards that disrupt our plans so sometimes our castles are going to get knocked down and we're going to be able to build them back up again as we go so we'll load in and then i'll teach you how to play I'll have it load in here all right here we go so houses are shuffling what you're going to be doing on your turn is you're going to get three sand block. So you're going to get to place up to three of them. You do not have to place all three, but if you want to, you can. When you start to place, you can place anywhere on the beach. However, as soon as you place your first one, you can only place orthogonally, Alexis, <laughs> to, <laughs> I know that, that <laughs> to that uh, square. You could also play on top of it if you wanted to, which I don't know if that classifies as orthogonal, but we're going to use it. You can place your cubes anywhere on the beach to start and then orthogonally to that space. Now, why you want to place in certain areas is because you have certain pieces in front of you. If you use, you can see there's six cards sitting in front of you. Those are your pieces. Think of your pieces match your player color. Sand blocks do not necessarily belong to you. They are sand blocks that everyone can use. But pieces are specifically yours and they match your player color. So if you click on the inspect button, Alexis, and then click on the left card, it's gonna be an arch. When you're placing things, you wanna keep in mind that these are how you're gonna score points. You're gonna score sand dollars, and that's how you're gonna win the game is having the most sand dollars. So you wanna try to place these things onto the beach so you get points. If you place the arch onto the beach, you're gonna score two sand dollars. You see that there's two sand dollars at the top of the card. But in order to place the arch, you have to place it between two pillars and both of the sides have to be open because thematically um, your kingdom and your people need to be able to get through the arch. You can't block it off, right? You have to make sure the front and the back are open and it needs to have the pillars to support it. So go ahead and click the next button. We're going to go to the next one. The tower. You have two towers. Each tower on the beach of yours gives you one sand dollar each. The towers must have at least two open walls adjacent to it. So the picture is showing an angle. You could also have a straight line. So it just needs to have two openings where like with the tower, you gotta be able to get out of the tower. You gotta mm -hmm. think of these things thematically, right? <laughs> Next is the door. The door is very similar to that archway we started with, except it only needs one block on each side but it does need to have the two faces open because you gotta be able to get through the door. You have two doors, each of them is one sand dollar. Next is the princess. So the princess must be placed on a pillar, so at least two high, with nothing adjacent to the block below her. Your princess, if your princess is on the beach, you get two sand dollars. Um, Sovereignty is gonna know all of these restriction placements, so don't worry, it'll tell you which ones you can and can't place, but I'm just going to go through them all. You have two archers. Each archer on the beach is going to give you two or a sand dollar each. Must be placed adjacent to a sand block. So it needs to kind of have that back support kind of thing. And lastly is the guard. 
You have two guards. Each guard on the beach gives you one sand dollar. You must be play or the guard must be placed adjacent to at least one open wall. So that's what that picture is showing you. It needs mm -hmm. to have an opening. <clears throat> Those are all the pieces that you want to kind of consider when you're placing onto the board. On the board itself, so the beach, I like to reference it as the beach, um, <laughs> has some rocks on it. Those are those gray cubes. Those are permanently there, but you can use them to build off of. You can't put mm -hmm. figures, you can't put the people on the rocks, but you can use them for your structures, so like your arch, your doorway. You can put something on either side. There are also seaweed tokens. If you place something on top of a seaweed token, you get that token and it's two points at the end of the game. So another way to get some more points. That's the first part of your turn. So why don't you go ahead? We're, we'll just learn as we go here. So um, let's see, Alexis, you're going first. Try to make something. So try to be able to place okay. either a person or a structure. Um, and you don't have to click on the sand block. Sovereignty already has it highlighted for you. So you just click on one of the squares in the center. Okay. Hmm. You could Alexis like the tower, for example. You have enough. Yeah. You have three sand blocks, so you can make that L shape anywhere on the beach. You could also get some more points by placing it on top of a seaweed. Piece. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or you could build a doorway by using one of the rocks on the beach. So that could be your one support, and then you just put another one next to it. So <laughs> now is when you can place, and you want to place as many as you can. I got it. Okay. Because that's how you're going to score points. So before we go through that hazard phase that I haven't even told you about, because I wanted to do it in different phases, um, <laughs> we it's going to score you those points. So once you're, so you scored your one point for having yep. your tower out there. Now okay. we go through hazards. Now this okay. is what's going to wreck all of your plans potentially, but <laughs> it is what it is. Sand, That's build, why sand castle building on the beach. <laughs> there are three hazards on the board. There is the dragon. There's the giant, which is the baby. And then there is the terror, which is the dog. So if you see it's to the left of the beach board, there's three piles of cards. Click inspect mode and then click on the, the far left one. If the dragon gets activated, it's going to remove all the pieces and blocks on the top two layers. Um, the bottom layer will never be removed. So the dragon is a kite. So it's just swooping over all of the top stuff. If it's activated in that row, you want to keep in mind that that's what it would destroy. So go ahead and click deselect. Because if you hit the next arrow, it's just going to go through the entire dragon deck. Deselect okay. and then click the center pile, which would pull up the giant. If the giant is activated, the giant removes all the figures in the lane. So the baby wants to play with all the people. So mm -hmm. they will remove all of the figures from that lane if the giant is activated. Hit deselect and then hit the terror. So if the terror gets activated, remove all the pieces and sand blocks from the closest tile in Ooh. that lane. If you okay. click deselect, the tiles are kind of the like, three by four or four by four grids oh, yeah. in yep. that area. Yep. Okay. Now, when it's your turn, you get to move a hazard. If you move a hazard, it will not activate and the cards won't get drawn for it because on the back of those cards that we just looked at are potentially going to activate those hazards. There's going to be like exclamation points. And if you get three of them, then it's going to activate that hazard. We'll see okay. it later on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, so what I would suggest doing, I would move the terror because if the terror stays and the terror gets activated, it's going to destroy everything you just built. The okay. baby or the giant won't because the giant only destroys and takes away the figures. You don't have any figures. You only have mm -hmm. structures. So you're safe. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say move the terror so that the terror doesn't get activated. Okay. And then it's going to draw the card. I think you move the dragon. Did oh my dragon? god! Yep, that's Wrong okay. Word. The chair is the dog. Sorry, <laughs> move the dog. <laughs> this one. There we go. Okay. There you go, and then Ooh. it has to move to the next section of the board to an open mm -hmm. spot. So you get to choose either the shovel or the wave. Okay, now you can choose the giant or the dragon, whatever order. It won't matter. Okay, so that's two exclamation points. The giant doesn't get activated. The dragon only has one exclamation point right now. We're looking for once they get three, they're going to destroy stuff. Okay. So now it's Jillian's turn. So we just keep going yeah. around. 
There are in the, how many, we have three players in a three player game. There are five days. We'll all go five turns at the end of the fifth day. We get to activate the hazards one more time. Yeah, right. so like ultimate chaos at the end. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> You're just like trying to sabotage everybody else's plan at the end, which is like really fun, but also sad. <laughs> I don't know, what am I going to do already? I think I'm going to copy Alexis and try to make a tower at first. Perfect. So, so while Jillian is taking a turn, there's one like group of cards I didn't talk about yet. So the cards... If you look down, use your right uh, mm -hmm. kind of like angle down. I was wondering what table. those were all about. Yeah. So <laughs> there are three of them. You can only like do two of them. So once you've reached two, you won't be able to do the third. Okay. Some of them are going to be about making a certain structure, a certain shape with some sand um, blocks. Other ones are going to be like, it'll say on the card what you need to do. But as soon as you are able to complete that card, you get the sand dollars for it. So it's just more ways to get sand dollars and more points. I kind of like how many different ways that things can happen in this game. That's kind of exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So the giant is going to be activated and nothing's going to happen because there are no figures out. And then the oh the terror is going to get activated but nothing's over there so that's good. yeah and it's super um, fun because after they're activated they move to the next um adjacent block next to it with the same mm -hmm. symbol so it keeps moving even after it's activated so there's a lot I of like movement that. lots <laughs> of destroying lots of rebuilding so it's really fun <laughs> I'm going to go over here and I'm going to play the door. I think I'm going to do the tower. Okay. I'm going to move the dragon. Uh, okay. They all have only one exclamation point, which makes it scary. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Like, two away from mass destruction. You're right. <laughs> so, um, strategy question. Is it better to try mm -hmm. to build things in the same area as where your other buildings and things are? Or is it better to try to spread it out? Or is it kind of, a, does it really matter? Depends on the game. Um, I think building it around the same Um. Yes, you're more prone to hazards, but um, there's That's certain, what I was asking, yeah. Yeah, I guess with the different, like, castle cards, which are those, like, little, like, object objective cards with, like, the mm -hmm. sand dollars on the bottom, there are certain ones where it's, like, place a certain am amount of pieces in, in one round, mm -hmm. and you need um, the area to be built pretty built up to do that. So mm -hmm. I think um, doing that and getting the points for those castle cards and getting as many points as you can in one round is a pretty good objective to have. Okay. Yeah. Just don't get attached to anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vibe yes. I'm getting. I'm like, anything <laughs> can happen at any second. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> The good thing is, though, if things do get destroyed, you can potentially get more sand blocks to place. Mm -hmm. So if you have, like, two or three pieces that get destroyed between your, like, yeah. next turn, you get an additional sand block. So you can build with more, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh, oh, the tear. Okay, nobody's okay. over there. Now. I was like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm already scared even though nothing's happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What am I going to do this round? Okay. Do you have any questions, Alexis? Are you, you I did, that was kind of the first one that came to my mind. It's Good. a lot going on. So I'm just trying to like kind of watch what you guys are doing to also get an yeah. idea of like what the right route to go is. But I like how many different things are happening that you need to like yeah. process and pay attention to on each turn. Mm -hmm. Yes. I also like the way that um, 
different people go about building at first like you asking mm-hmm. that question like is it good to um, do it all in one place or just like kind of spread it out because you can do that um, mm-hmm. and I'd never really thought about it that way and I'm like huh and now I want to try that strategy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um okay we're gonna move this here I also love the uncertainty of what's gonna happen because as much as I love a game that's like very manipulative and like you have to be kind of creative and crafty I also love an element of like uncertainty that can happen to anybody no matter how hard you try to avoid it like I do love games that have that kind of element in them right yeah it's it's nice it's like a nice amount of randomness because it's like you're like well now I have to watch out for the kite or the dragon (laughs) just in case so I'm gonna be maybe a little bit more thinky about this placement (laughs) And I like playing this on Sovereignty too because it's really easy to know like what you can place and stuff because I know that mm-hmm. for some people um, the iconography on the cards can be like a little bit confusing. So just having that like automatic placement is just very nice. I'll move the terror away from your stuff, Alexa, since you're just <laughs> learning. <laughs> How nice of you, Danny. <laughs> Danny always has like a little bit of sympathy for me every game we play where she's like, okay, we're going to give her like some little bit of help in this instance because <laughs> yeah, Lord That's have fair. mercy on her. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for your first question, Jillian? Yes, I'm always ready. <laughs> All right. So this is Alexis in my third series. We started off by introducing her to the board gaming terms and jargon there was lots of lots of those were um mechanics so Mm -hmm. my question to you is do you have a favorite board game mechanic and if so what's your favorite game that has that mechanic um I would have to say that my um favorite mechanic is either like deck building or like hand management um and it's hard to pick one in that specific genre because there's so many good ones um like for example like I really love uh Nemesis for the hand management aspect and that's like so different than most like deck builders that I do love to play like um there's one from Japan Anime Games that we got at Gen Con on a whim like a couple of years ago and um it's called Heart of Crown and that's like a true deck builder and it's there's like a market in the middle too so it's like it's a really fun game and oh no oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> not my poor princess <laughs> I was distracted <laughs> for <princess>. one second <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I I really like games with cards in general um where you're interacting with people in that way or like choo- like making decisions um, for yourself in that way, like Nemesis. So if I had to choose between those two games, it definitely would be Nemesis, um, even though it's not really deck building. Um, but Heart of Crown, I think, is my favorite deck builder out there. It's like, it's really interesting. And it's like uh, the like quote unquote Meritrash game with the figurines the miniatures the whole like shebang as you're playing it but I really enjoy it for that reason too (laughs) that's that's important that's the only important thing is if you enjoy it yes that's that's a good thing now what am I gonna do without my princess here I know (laughs) that's one of my favorite parts of filming these videos is like when we're discussing like things outside of the game and then something happens in the game and everybody's like oh my god (laughs) (laughs) happened (laughs) Like, I don't know what to do. Okay. I think I'm going to do get you away from my area. <laughs> my place here. Danny, I can't remember if you mentioned this when you went through kind of the logistics of the game, but I know you said there's five rounds. Is the winner just simply the person who has the most points at the end, or is there anything else that's added into how that's that's figured out? Uh, Nope. So we'll play five rounds just like we've been playing where you – Yep place some sand blocks and then place any pieces that you can or want to and then score and then hazards get activated the very last round at the end we're gonna all just do the hazard part so we aren't gonna 
score any points until after everyone has moved hazards, activated hazards. So that could potentially be more catastrophic. Um, but then at the end of that, we score one more time to see what pieces are still left, basically. That's the only kind of different piece, but that's all just contributing to the same thing, which is how you win the most sand dollars. I don't think I specifically mentioned this, but I hope you're seeing it as we're playing through it. But the more that you have left out there, those are going to keep contributing to your score. Mm -hmm. They get extra points for surviving mm -hmm. the hazards. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. We have to move the dog. Otherwise, <laughs> it won't go well. Yeah. <laughs> Move the terror. We'll see if the giant. Oh, we'll see. Oh, I've lost oh, my guard. No. Oh. It's okay. It's just the guard. I didn't lose my door as well. <laughs> <laughs> if the terror got activated, it would have been. <laughs> I feel like the terror is like one of the hardest hazards in the game because you're always building on the outside. So there's always a chance that it's just going to ruin absolutely everything. Everything. Yes. Versus the, the giant just takes the figures and the, mm -hmm. the dragon only takes the top two layers. Derek takes it all. <laughs> Have you played with the meteor yet? The one with the dice? Oh, I don't, I played with the Oh, yes, I have. I was going to say I've played with the volleyball, which is the, oh, yeah. the meteor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, it's like, it's one of my favorite because it does add, I like a little bit of randomness in games and it just adds that extra layer yeah. of randomness. Um, so it just, it's just really fun, like rolling the dice as well. I like um, that one Just too. as an extra yeah. mechanic. Yeah, it's really fun. I love all the like, the thought behind the theme of this game like mm -hmm. like I don't know just I like that it's a fun little like, if you think about yourself as like the kingdom of shorelings you yes know? and, and you have to like size down and, yeah yeah it's it's really fun um did you know that each kingdom has like in game canon names so like um Danny you're playing as no. the sea glass kingdom Alexis, yeah. you're the Coral Kingdom, and I'm the oh, Crab Rider fun. Kingdom. <laughs> oh, I like that name. <laughs> I get to ride crabs. <laughs> Man, where am I going to go? I like when the theme connects it all. So, Alexis, so we're playing three of the hazards. There are more hazards that you can play into the game, and then there's Ooh. different cards that can be associated with the different pieces. So, like, the arch isn't always the arch. Like in other games, it could be a monument. So it's a different way okay. of building it, but it's the same structure okay, or the same like piece, but it has a different card. So it can really change up and make this game have a ton of replayability because yeah. you're not always playing with these same six cards and these same three hazards. Yeah. So like the one that Jillian mentioned, the meteor, you roll a die and it can either hit in the section one, two, or three. I always appreciate that because I'm somebody who, like, when I get stuck on something, like, I am stuck on it until, mm -hmm. like, God knows how long it takes me to get onto it, something new. So, like, I appreciate when there could be some variety to something that I love because I have been yeah. known to, you know, get stuck with things and I'm like, I just want to do it over and over and over and yeah. over again. I totally get that. Oh, this was, like, kind of like a lose-lose for me, but less so... <laughs> Um, oh, I just wanted to go over my turn with you all because um, it was kind of a big turn for me. I completed two of my castle cards, mm. um, Ooh, which nice. was um, the corner piece and deep study, which is place no pieces this round. So your pieces are your like Ooh. structures and your figures. Um, mm -hmm. So because I completed the corner, I was like, well, don't need to do any pieces so that's all I'm gonna do now I am worried about this giant getting rid of my little figurine up there but we'll oh. see hopefully not oh Ooh, there it goes no. <laughs> all of us no <laughs> all of us <laughs> <right here>. <laughs> <laughs> all right I completed my fortress card nice seven points all right, what do, what do I want to do now? Let me put that 
there. Guard and the other guard. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's a big turn for you, too. You're starting to rack up the points. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is, yeah, this is when it gets tricky, though. I feel like the hazards always reach there. Mm-hmm. I think we got to move the dragon. Oh, great. Oh, no. Okay, no more figures so that the baby can't harm anything. Dang. So that's good. Two baby <laughs> poles in a row. Baby. <laughs> Baby's just running all over the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited. So this is the last oh. round you'll get to play stand. So if you can, try to make one of your um, cards. So our second series, our first series was the one about the board game jargon. And our second mm -hmm. series, we went to a game store. We took Alexis to her first ever game store. It was very exciting. Amazing. Um, and so we are wondering, do you have a favorite game store you want to shout out? And what is your favorite part of a game store? Oh, man. There's a couple of game stores that I want to shout out. Um, one of them is in Texas. It's Common Grounds. Um, I believe they might have a couple of shops, but we just worked with them uh, recently uh, through our featured retailer thing at Brotherwise, and they were just like really fun to work with. So shout out to Common Grounds. Um, and then Games and Stuff in Maryland as well is another good uh, shop. And then here in Columbus, there's not very many um, board game stores that I've gone to yet, which is horrible of me considering how long <laughs> I've lived here. Um, but I do love uh, Tabletop Game Cafe, which is in the Clintonville area, if anybody is watching this from Columbus. Um, and the people that just own it are just amazing. And I, it's like one of my favorite board game cafes ever. So if you're ever here, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Do you guys have anything? Do you have like a favorite like section of board game stories? Because mine is always like the Pokemon cards, even though I don't <laughs> know anything about Pokemon. <laughs> I, I just like walking around and seeing what I can recognize and mm -hmm. then what I don't recognize. Like, or I've heard a name before. Like I, I hear just working in the industry, I hear tons of names of games, but mm -hmm. like I haven't always seen them. Or vice versa, right? Like I've seen them, but I've never played it. Or like, I don't know anything about it, but I've seen the box basically. So I like mm -hmm. to find them and like, oh, that's what that looks like. Or like, oh, I should, you know, try that game. Because I like mm -hmm. how you can play games at the game stores as well. Like we went to Tower Games in Minneapolis. They have a really nice like set up back room that allows you to like, they have a whole game shelf that you can play games before you buy them. And they got, you know, nice tables like everything's mm -hmm. like nicely set up and so I like to just browse and see what they have that I recognize but also go try some games I've only ever been to tower games and I liked all the games we would talk about in our videos like actually seeing them in person made me feel like yeah. I actually knew something I'm like oh my god like we've talked about this like it's so cool to actually see the box and see like the artwork in person because Danny's mm -hmm. mentioned this bit there this game before so that was really cool for yeah. me was Seen games that we had talked about that I finally was able to see in person. Mm -hmm. That's so well, fun. I oh. do really like, I wish I lived closer to a board game cafe. My husband and I, we always go like to just like a, a reg, like it's just like a cafe cafe, it's not board mm -hmm. game one. We'll bring our own mm -hmm. games, but I like the idea of like leaving my house, especially because we both work from home. So it's like we're here all the time. And so to get out and like go play games, but I'm like, I want to play like ones I don't, you know? Yeah. So I wish I lived a little closer to a cafe where I could like have something to eat. And like, I, we went to one in, I want to say it was Philly. Cause I think we were at PAX Unplugged. Mm -hmm. And it was just so fun. I got myself a hot cocoa. I was like, this is so fun. Like a fun little ambiance, you know? Like, yeah. Play some games I've never played before. So. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's really nice too. like, like you said before, just to try out some new games, like if you're unsure if you want to buy it, or mm -hmm. if you just, uh, just want to try it out maybe once. I love board game cafes for that reason. And you can always like find like I found a couple of friends through like board game cafes too. They're always like, 
I feel like people are just super nice in this industry where they're like, Hey, what's your plan? And like, have you played <laughs> this before? Or do you want me to teach you? Which is always really nice. So there's always good yeah. vibes there. Dragon knocked down my stuff again. So now I'm invading. I found oh, that was yeah. tragic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm invading Alexis's kingdom. You're just like, <laughs> you're working together over there. Yeah. I'm just doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> What if we go here and then we can, oh, I have another one. I missed that. Let's, let's place there. I think I'm able to place my princess then. Yes. I haven't been able to place my princess all game. <laughs> so that's He's good. He's finally um, out. This I'm seems like it's art. a fun game to play in person as well with like the blocks on the board like I feel yeah. like it would be cool to watch it all like unfold and develop yeah it's fun playing with uh kids too because they get so excited about the destruction they're like yeah <laughs> it's happening I'm like no it's bad for you and they're like no <laughs> I don't care <laughs> yeah <laughs> just destruction <laughs> I'm going to move on We've got a lot of baby no, keep or it giant away from pools. Me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> They're all down by us. <laughs> and okay. <laughs> um, all right, Alexis. So now you're just moving the hazards because that was our our last round. So yeah, we'll see what happens at the end. <laughs> yeah. <you go>. Okay. <laughs> you're like, get that baby away from me. <laughs> I'm like, from my short. There's a lot going. Oh no! Oh no! Not the terror! Not the terror! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. What's Jillian gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm gonna move this. Oh no. Oh, that doesn't okay. affect me. <laughs> like... It's like you can't even be too shady because if you try to like destroy somebody else's stuff on their turn, they're going to be like, all right, well, I'm just going to go destroy <laughs> your stuff now. Like... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Unless you move the, the giant, we're going to get another baby pull, most likely, which is <laughs> there's been a lot oh, of baby movement. The baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move the terror. <gasps> Oh, the terror won't activate. Yeah. Though. I was like, the oh only thing that could potentially destroy is the is the dragon. Ooh! All right, We're safe. Okay, so now we score one more time all of our pieces, and then we're gonna add up all the seaweed tokens that we have. Oh yay! I didn't get that many seaweed this time around. It's all good. <gasps> Danny, you've scored so well. Thank you. There we go. That's Castles by the Sea. What'd you think, Alexis? That was fun. I really <laughs> liked how there was a lot of different pieces going on at any given moment. Like every single turn, you were worried about so many different things. And I liked how hard that made me think about every single move I was doing. And like I mentioned at uh, the beginning of the game, at any given moment, there's this element of uncertainty that can happen to any single player in the game. So I kind of like that no matter how hard you scheme, something bad is probably going to happen to you at some point in the game. So that game was a lot of fun. And I love the beach theme because I love the beach. So anything beach themed, beach related makes me happy. So that game was a ton of fun to play. There's like a, a Riptide expansion to another uh, hazard, basically, where the Riptide is coming in and like taking your stuff away. And it's, it's really mm -hmm. fun. And it adds like another layer of like chaos and hazards to the game highly recommend it so one of the reasons we've been doing these series here on sovereignty is to help introduce new gamers like me to the community so we're asking all of our veteran gamers who've been joining us in these series for advice to new gamers and any gateway games that you really loved when you first joined the community that you would suggest to new gamers now i would say like try as much as you can um and not like focus too much about like which mechanics you like because uh, mechanics from game to game can be 
completely different. I really liked deck building, but there's deck building games that I do not like because there's like an added aspect to the game that I don't like. So really just like honing in on your taste that way, I think can like expand your um, knowledge about the industry and like what you like. Um, As for gateway games, man, there's so many good ones. Like I really like any roll and write. I feel like that's what really got me into um, this industry. I was like, oh, you can do this brain exploded meme or whatever. And like, I just was like, wow, this is like (laughs) really cool. Uh, So my favorite game to introduce to people to the board gaming industry to show like how different things can be is super mega lucky box. It's a really fun uh, roll and write really easy to learn, really easy to pick up and um, really quick too. So it's usually a hit and I absolutely love it myself. Obviously this game we played here today, Castles by the Sea was played on Sovereignty, which is a digital board gaming app. There's lots of great reasons why playing online is a good way to go. But Jillian, what are some of your favorite reasons for playing board games online? I love playing with people all around the world. So like I have friends in Maryland, I have friends in Washington, I have friends in California. So being able to all play a game, even if it's on like BGA two or on Sovereignty together, it's like, it's so easy and fun. Um, just like, even like with you two, like this is my first time meeting you. Like, I feel like it's just like a really easy way to like break ice online and just like, you know, hang out and meet new people. So online games, I've, I've just love for this reason. Awesome. Well, we love it too, because it gives us a chance to get together, make fun videos like this, meet awesome guests like you, and just a chance to relax and try a new game like we were able to do today. Mm -hmm. Again, this was Castles by the Sea on Sovereignty. You could also go play this game if you watched this video and thought, wow, that looks like a lot of fun. I want to get in on that. You can go to Sovereignty, create a profile, and you can check out that game along with many others. Make sure if you enjoyed this video, you go check out all of our other videos in this series with us some guests just like Jillian we have new videos that come out every Monday Jillian can you please let people know where they can find you if they want to check out your content and what you're all about just check out Brotherwise in general for anything new um, including Castles by the Sea for me personally um, you can find me um, anywhere with the username Mean Pomelo (laughs) it's really random username but that's me (laughs) and um, I'm on Twitch Twitter Instagram YouTube on all of those. Awesome. Well, we encourage all of you, if you were watching this video, to go check out everything that Jillian is all about. Jillian, we thank you for your time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big like, subscribe to Sovereignty on YouTube, and go check us out everywhere else on social media as well. Um, Hopefully, we'll see you guys in our next video. But in the meantime, have a great week. Bye, everybody. Bye.